bottom line is they should Nova Norda should not be charging us over a thousand dollars for this product a month when they're charging people in Germany fifty nine dollars charging people in Canada one hundred and fifty five dollars. The American people, in my view, no matter what your political view may be, are sick and tired of being ripped off by drug companies and paying the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs, including Ozepic. There you have Senator Bernie Sanders doing what he does best, speak out about the insane pharmaceutical drug prices that Americans have been price gouged on. Now he's speaking out after a new study revealed that Americans are getting price gouged for popular drugs like Ozempic, which happen to be incredibly cheap to make. The study from researchers at Yale King's College Hospital in London and Doctors Without Borders found that the blockbuster diabetes drug Ozempic could be manufactured for less than $5 a month. However, Novo Nordisk charges close to $1,000 per month for the injection, specifically here in the United States, not the case in other countries, which we'll get to in just a moment. So let's get to the details of this study. Researchers found that a month's supply of the treatment could be manufactured for an estimated 89 cents to $4.73. They evaluated manufacturing costs for the weekly injection along with a profit margin with an allowance for tax to produce those estimates, which they call cost based prices. In other words, even if, even if they sold the drug, uh, or these types of drugs known as GLP ones for three bucks a month rather than a thousand bucks a month, they would still be making a sweet profit. But apparently that's not enough because they're untethered to any law or regulation that would prevent them from price gouging Americans. And remember, we're talking about medications here, right? We're talking about pharmaceutical drugs, something that people in, in a lot of cases have no choice to just not take. They need it to survive or to live a healthy life. Yes, I get that Ozempic is also used for weight loss and in some cases is abused by people like celebrities looking to slim down. But there are people who legitimately have diabetes and rely on this drug to live a decent healthy life. Now, in other words, if they again sold the drug at just three dollars a month, they would still make a profit. Novo Nordisk's God, they got to come up with a better name. Like Novo Nordisk's list price for a monthly package of Ozempic is nine hundred thirty-five dollars and seventy-seven cents before insurance and other rebates. The findings suggest that GLP ones can likely be manufactured for prices far below current prices, enabling wider access, the researchers concluded. We know they can be, as Bernie said, Ozempic is available for $155 a month in Canada, much cheaper than what we're experiencing here in the United States, and just $59 in Germany. Now, demand for these medicines has soared over the last year in the United States, in the United States, especially for its off-label use of weight loss. But at the same time, more insurers are now dropping Ozempic from their plans due to the high cost associated with the drug, leaving some patients to experience difficulty in affording the medication they need. In a statement, Novo Nordisk. Declined to provide production costs for Ozempic and its weight loss drug counterpart, Wigovi. But the Danish drug maker noted that it spent almost $5 billion on research and development last year and will spend more than $6 billion on a recent deal to boost manufacturing to meet demand for GLP 1s. Oh, do you have to spend more money on manufacturing the drug because so many people want it, which means you're going to sell more of it? Oh my God, cry me a freaking river. Pausing here to deliver some honest truth as we do in our news coverage as well. TYT is facing challenges, guys, as the entire industry is. You know who could make the difference? You. If you hit the join button below, it's going to make all the difference and keep us in business. We appreciate you. Thank you. But also keep in mind that they're not exactly spending their last dollar on improving their drugs. They pocketed a ridiculous amount of cash. Full year operating profit jumped by 37% in Kroner and 44% at constant exchange rates to 102.6 billion Kroner, equivalent to about $15 billion. 
That marks the company's largest annual net profit going back to 1989. I mean, it's unsurprising when you consider how popular the drug is and how much they're price gouging Americans for it. Ozempic alone accounted for 41% of Novo's total sales in 2023, equivalent to nearly $14 billion, with two thirds of the drug sales coming from the United States. Wegovi brought in sales of about 4.5 billion. Listen, I wanna be clear about something. I, I believe that they deserve to make a profit. I'm not one of these people who frowns upon any and all profit. They have developed a drug that is improving people's lives and they deserve to make money off of that. However, the idea that they should charge Americans a thousand bu- around a thousand bucks a month for a drug that Germans pay 56 bucks for really, really highlights the corrupt rot we have in Congress that fails to protect American consumers and patients from this type of treatment. The only one who has been consistent in trying to fight against this has been Senator Bernie Sanders, which is why he'll always have my respect, even if I disagree with him here and there on other issues. He was a little late to the game when it came to Israel's war on Gaza, but I forgive him, he's now on the right side. But let's get back to this story. So Bernie Sanders is speaking out during this interview on MSNBC. He was asked to weigh in on why it is that Novo Nordisk can basically get away with price gouging Americans. Let's hear what he has to say. So why why does Novo Nordisk, in your opinion, charge so much more for Americans to get this drug? I know exactly why, and so does everybody else. Throughout the entire world, there are national health programs, which by the way, in most cases, guarantee health care to all of their people. And they sit down and they negotiate with the drug companies. And they say, you know what, you can't charge us any price you want. Let's sit down and talk about a reasonable price. Here in the United States, until last year, you had the insane situation where the drug companies could charge any price they wanted for any reason. Second of all, let's not kid ourselves. The pharmaceutical industry is enormously powerful. They have over 1,800 well-paid lobbyists in Washington, D.C. right now, former leaders of the Republican Party, the Democratic Party. They're very nonpartisan. They will give money to anybody. That graphic that they used on MSNBC showing what patients in other countries pay for the exact same drug really highlights the point that Senator Sanders is trying to make. Again, Canada pays $147. You know, you have Germany paying even less than that. Let's see, yeah, take a look at that. United Kingdom, they pay $93, okay? Uh, France, $83. We're just completely getting screwed over here as Americans, and our government is allowing it to happen. And Novo Nordisk, like most drug companies, basically touted the fact that most patients don't ever really pay the full price here in America, right? They might get rebates, they might get discounts, things like that. But Bernie Sanders explains in this next video why that's a pretty crappy argument. People who have good insurance may end up not paying a whole lot for their product. The truth is that insurance costs in the United States are enormously high. And the reason is insurance companies have to pay top dollar for these products. Thirdly, there are a lot of people in America who are underinsured or have no insurance at all, and they are forced to pay list prices. I just, I really appreciate the focus from Senator Sanders, the focus on things that matter. I mean, like the world can be burning down with manufactured culture war nonsense, and homeboy is like super focused on getting your drug prices down. God, I'm just thinking about what the country would have been if he won the Democratic nomination in 2016. Anyway, too bad, so sad, I guess. He also commented on the fact that if we do not substantially reduce the price of this drug, it could potentially bankrupt the Medicare system. A recent Kaiser Family Foundation study found Medicare Part D spent a total of $5.7 billion in 2022 on Ozempic and other similar weight loss drugs combined, up from $57 million in 2018. So for all of the 
conservative lawmakers who keep whining and crying about the possibility of Medicare going bankrupt. I would ask them why they're so against allowing the Medicare system to negotiate drug prices on behalf of Medicare recipients. We're not talking about price controls. I'm not in favor of price controls. We're talking about simply allowing Medicare to negotiate drug prices. They are barred from doing that with the exception of 10 drugs, many of which will have the generic version available soon. It's just so incredibly infuriating. Now, let's talk a little bit about what Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden did together today. Now, Joe Biden is looking to capitalize politically on Bernie's ongoing fight against high prescription drug costs. He knows that this is an issue that a lot of Americans care about and it could potentially help him win the general election if he panders to those Americans, just keeping it real. He asked him to give remarks today at a joint conference about drug makers capping the costs of inhalers. Back in March, three of the four largest inhaler manufacturers announced that they would cap the prices of inhalers for many patients at $35 per month thanks to pressure from Bernie Sanders. The announcements came from Sanders earlier this year. The announcements came after Sanders earlier this year led a letter from a group of Senate Democrats to the CEOs of the four biggest manufacturers of inhalers sold in the US, demanding information and documents on the costs involved in manufacturing the inhalers, among other issues. At the time of the letter, one of AstraZeneca's inhalers cost $645 in the US, but just $49 in the United Kingdom, as an example. And during the press conference, Bernie also gave Biden credit for his action on prescription drug costs. Although, anyway, let's just watch. The Biden administration and Democrats in Congress are beginning to make some progress. What have we accomplished over the last several years? As a result of the Inflation Reduction Act that not one single Republican voted for, seniors with diabetes are paying no more than $35 a month for the insulin that they need. Beginning next year, and this is a very big deal, seniors will be paying no more than $2,000 a year out of pocket for prescription drugs. And maybe most importantly, for the first time in American history, Medicare is negotiating with the pharmaceutical industry to lower some of the most expensive prescription drugs in America. Remember when the Democratic establishment told us that that guy is just too old to be president? Anyway, there's a good reason Biden is trotting out Sanders to talk about lowering drug prices. More than half of Democrats and Republicans said they were worried about prescription drug costs. And that's according to a February poll by Kaiser Family Foundation, a nonpartisan research organization. But Biden's drug pricing changes have not resonated with many Americans. About three quarters of adults were unaware of the Inflation Reduction Act's provisions to cap insulin costs and seniors out of pocket spending, according to a November KFF poll. And look, the reason why this is happening, the reason why most Americans haven't noticed the drug pricing provisions in the Inflation Reduction Act is because it only impacts a small percentage of drugs, small number of drugs, not even percentage, 10 drugs can be negotiated by the Medicare system. Yes, there are now price caps on inhalers, which is fantastic, that is a good thing. But as you can see with Ozempic and similar drugs, there are a lot of pharmaceutical drugs that are not impacted by the legislation at all. So most Americans are not feeling the benefits of those provisions. It's really not rocket science. But again, I do want to give Bernie Sanders some credit because any good policy that's come out of the Biden administration, any good appointments that have come out of the Biden administration, whether it be Lena Khan as the head of the FTC or the more robust labor relations board. I have no doubt that that influence came from Senator Sanders. And I wish he had more influence over Biden. I wish that there was more accomplished in regard to lowering drug prices for Americans. But there have been there has been some movement and I'm not gonna give Biden credit for that. I'm gonna give Bernie credit for that. 
I get that Bernie wants to help Biden get reelected. Bernie is terrified of Trump getting elected for a second term, and I totally get that. But I just think it's wrong to give Biden all the credit when he didn't even really fight for his own agenda and allowed for conservative Democrats like Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin to torpedo his agenda. It really made me question whether he believed in his agenda in the first place. But nonetheless, Biden claims that he's a champion for patients and that he drastically lowered drug prices. We should take it with a grain of salt. He brags that he allowed Medicare to negotiate with drug companies, but it does come with a lot of caveats. Most importantly, right now, Medicare is only allowed to negotiate the prices of 10 drugs. Under the excessively long process, prices on the initial 10 drugs will not see any reductions until 2026. Another 15 drugs will be negotiated negotiated in 2027 and in 2028 and 20 each year after that. Moreover, several of the most exorbitantly priced drugs aren't even eligible for negotiation, at least not yet. No, you really nailed it, Biden. You really you really nailed it. Right? The whole point of passing popular legislation is so those provisions go into effect and Americans feel the benefits of it. Before you run for re-election, before you run for re-election. I mean, it's just incompetence on a level that I haven't seen in a long time. It's amazing, it is amazing. But here we are, gotta give Bernie credit. And I guess if you wanna give Biden credit, sure. I think he was absolutely weak when it came to those negotiations. But at least something got accomplished. Thanks for watching the video guys. We also love it if you hit the join button below because that makes you a member and members allow us to be independent, honest. We could be as progressive as we want, no corporate media influence and that's all because of you guys. We love doing the show with our members. Hit the join button, become one of the Young Turks.